If I have in one hand some sand and in the other hand some salt and I put them together, I create a new material, a mixture. This is a heterogeneous mixture. It is heterogeneous because the ingredients, sand and salt, keep their own identity. The situation is quite different in this glass of lemonade. This is a homogeneous mixture. It's different from a heterogeneous mixture because the ingredients are mixed together homogeneously on a molecular scale. Some of these ingredients are given over here. Water is an ingredient. Water is a pure substance. Another pure substance is sucrose. Sucrose gives the lemonade its sweet flavor. The acidic flavor derives from the presence of citric acid, another pure substance. Vitamin C is also present in the glass of lemonade. It is yet another pure substance. All these pure substances are classified as compounds. Compounds contain multiple elements, in this case, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Elements are also called atoms, and atoms are composed of electrons, protons, and neutrons. So we see that in the classification of materials, the flow goes all the way from mixtures down to fundamental particles. This chart summarizes the classification of materials. Matter can be subdivided into pure substances and mixtures. Mixtures contain pure substances. Mixtures can be subdivided into heterogeneous mixtures. Think about the grains of salt and the grains of sand mixed together. And homogeneous mixtures. Think about the lemonade. In a homogeneous mixture, the ingredients are mixed together homogeneously on a molecular level. An example of a pure substance is sugar. These sugar cubes contain sugar molecules, which is a pure substance. Pure substances can be subdivided into elemental materials and compounds. An example of an elemental material is, for instance, a diamond. Diamond contains the element carbon. An example of a compound is, again, the sugar molecule. A compound contains multiple elements unlike an elemental material. Now, another word for an element is an atom. So both compounds and elements are made of atoms. And atoms, in turn, consist of a nucleus and electrons, as we have learned. And the nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons. Again, the flow goes all the way from mixtures and pure substances down to the level of fundamental particles, the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now let us look at one single molecule. This is a water molecule. The properties of water, however, does not rely on a single molecule. It relies on multiple molecules, and it relies on the interaction between these molecules. Here's one way in which these molecules can interact. They can interact very, very strongly, so strongly that they keep each other in place into a fixed lattice and this fixed lattice gives the material rigidity. This way of organizing is called the solid state. The solid state of water is ice. Now here's another example in which the molecules can organize themselves. These are the same water molecules, but they do not form a lattice anymore. Here, they are freely floating around. However, they are still together quite closely, and they still interact quite strongly. This is called the liquid state of the material. In the case of water, we call the liquid state simply liquid water. Here's another example. This is the gas state. And in the gas state, the very same water molecules are now very far apart, so far apart that they no longer interact. The gas state of water is called steam or water vapor. The three basic states are, therefore, the solid state, the liquid state, and the gas state. And the differences between the states is not the composition. All the molecules are the same here. It is the way in which the molecules organize themselves together. Let us finish the segment by looking at three fundamental properties of matter. The first property relates to the quantity of matter. It is the mass. The more you have of a particular material, the higher its mass. Volume is another property of matter. It relates to the volume occupied 
by the material. Now note that this does not only depend on the quantity of the material. That is illustrated here. Consider this balloon. The volume of the balloon is dictated by the gas inside of it. If I put the very same balloon into a colder room, the gas will compress, the balloon will shrivel, the volume will be less. However, the amount of material is still the same. The mass is still the same. We see, therefore, that the volume is not dependent only on the amount of material, but on the amount of volume occupied, the amount of space occupied by the material. The last property we will consider is the property density. It is defined as mass per volume, or D equals M over V. This big chunk of lead is an example of a high density material. It has a high density because it has lots of mass per volume. These lead bullets next to it have a mass that is much lower. However, their density is exactly the same. The density is the same because the mass per volume is the same in the bullets as the mass per volume in the big chunk of lead next to it. This means that the density is not dependent on the quantity of material. It is a property of the material itself independent of how much you have of that material. Now let's look at a material that has a low density. This is bromine gas. Bromine gas has a low density because it has low mass per unit volume. It has a low mass per unit volume because the molecules are very, very far apart, leading to a low-density material.